Hey, what's up, folks? A while back, I made a website called Time Machine, and it was basically an aerial photography viewer, and you could change which year of aerial photography you were looking at, which would make you go forward and backward in time. Actually, just backward. We don't have the technology to get future aerials ahead of time yet. And that was it. To say I phoned that one in would be an understatement, because that's a super boring website. It's basically a map with a layer control is really all that is. So I kind of phoned it in, but it worked and my coworkers seemed to like it, which should have been a red flag to me, but I, I, I missed that. And I saw it was being discussed in my local next door Next door, if you're not from the U.S., is like a local community slash cesspool forum site. And I looked there, and people are having a hard time using it, and I could kind of understand why. So I wanted to refactor it anyway, but it, because it's super boring. But then we started working on a new contract with Nearmap, who does really cool stuff with aerial photography and other things. And we're going to get access to the near map API, which gives us a whole set of other aerials to play with. So I can integrate all that and refactor the UI and everything at the same time. Win for everybody. And that's what I did. And we currently just have it on a testing site while we poke it, but the source code is all up on GitHub. And I'll show you what that looks like. This is the current or old site. And mistakes were made. Mistakes made in my general proximity by someone that looks like me. Uh, the first mistake was this was using Mapbox GLJS. Not that that's a mistake in itself, but for this kind of app, it is the absolutely wrong tool. Uh, this is a leaflet or open layers kind of app. Now, I went with GLJS at the time because, well, there are three reasons. One, I wasn't very interested in this project. Two, I was using GLJS a lot at the time and three there either was not or i wasn't aware of a way at that time for leaflet to stretch a base layer so if you have your aerials tiled to say zoom level 18 just let the map go all the way to zoom level 19 and just stretch that last that last zoom at the time there either wasn't a way or i didn't couldn't figure out a way to do that with leaflet now there's a very easy way to do that I knew I could do that with GLJS. So, yeah, mistake. Mistake number two was this uh, swipey thing. And I know you're thinking, how could a swipey thing be a mistake? And the reason why I say that is because you're a weirdo. And I'm a weirdo too, and that's why we appreciate things like this. For most people, they, they just are not going to be able to figure out how to use this, and it's just going to frighten them. So, that was a mistake. The other... Other problems with this is one is you're loading two base maps all the time so your network performance is garbage and you're having two whole full screen or full page maps loaded all the time and synced which is also bad for your performance and this is does not work well at all on mobile because you can move it you know a few centimeters and you're on the other side of your screen already all bad all the time and to pick the different sides, the years for these, you just had select boxes, which is, uh, for this kind of thing, it's not ideal because these are, these are more a linear sort of thing than a, a nominal sort of thing, if I'm using my old vocabulary words correctly. Not the best way to do that. Mistakes. Mistakes abound. Now, this is what the new site looks like and this is just out on our test machine and I'm not going to share you the URL to that I don't know how you would figure that out so you're, you're just out of luck but this is now using leaflet and I've been using leaflet on a couple projects lately after not using it for a while and oh man is it great this is using leaflet and now instead of those select boxes which are, this is just the wrong kind of thing for this kind of data because 1938 to 1951 has like this much space between them and 2007 has 
you just can't visualize timelines well that way. Now it's a time, it's a range slider. And you can make a range slider out of dates by converting the dates to timestamps. That way it is a long and incrementing integer and you just use your range input using that. So you set the min and max and it'll just figure everything out for itself. That's how you can turn a date into a, a range like that. Just change it to a, a timestamp or a Unix timestamp, just some kind of timestamp. So now you can slide it around and the, our, the near map stuff is integrated with the uh, our Mecklenburg County stuff. So this is near map, we can go over here and this is 2012 Mecklenburg County and you can just slide this around wherever you want. This is another near map. Go back out to the current day near map. And this is the Price is Right rules. It's uh, uh, the closest to the date without going over is who wins on that one. Near map, uh, the way their API works, which is, is a really cool API, is it'll actually, you can give it an until date and it'll consolidate different surveys. Like you can see these color difference here. This is like a January 25th, 2022, and this is like February 5th, 2022. And it's just kind of integrating those together, which is really cool. It's a cool API. The, the near map folks know what they're doing. So that's how the time machine controls work on your time machine. Now for this slider thing, which 95% uh, of people will not use slash be confused by, that's now a time lens, and it's hidden behind this thing, which is not a copyright infringement, I don't think. Uh, in Doctor Who, the time machine is like a British police phone booth box. So this is like a British, British police phone booth box, but surely those are not copyrighted. But you, you know, we'll, we'll just jump in here a little bit somewhere. You can click on the time machine, and it'll make this time lens and it's using this green color to kind of unite all these things. It adds another range slider for that particular, uh, for the time lens itself. So now when we look through this lens, we're looking at what it looked like uh, back for this date. So back in time a bit. Like it looks like now in 2022, there's like a retention pond here. Do not swim in that, kids. You will, you will grow horns. Uh, so that apparently got added at some point, but it wasn't there in 2023. Let's go forward a bit. It is there in 2028. It is not there. Well, actually, you can kind of see the outline of it. it must be really algae filled in 2026. Go back to. Uh, 2025 looks like it was made around between 2022 and 2024 is when they put that in so you can do cool stuff like that where we just move through time people we didn't need an einstein rosenberg bridge we didn't need uh you know any of that we didn't need to fly around the sun really fast cool so that's how that works it's for the expert users they have it there if they need it. For the knobs, is it noobs or is it knobs? I've heard it both ways. For the knobs, uh, they won't be distracted by that. And you can use the site perfectly well without ever even seeing that's there. The other thing I did is I just put a little leaflet layer control here. In the old one, we had some tree canopy stuff that was hooked to a particular year. Like this will be the 2016 aerials with the 2016 tree canopy. Now you can just turn on the tree canopy with whatever, you know, year you want, which is a handier way to do it. And I added a your typical roads label layer that you see on aerials. That, that's coming from GeoServer, by the way. Woo, GeoServer, shout out. So that's how all of that works now. So how do I make it? Uh, well, let's make this bigger for you. Hello. So, 
This is using Leaflet now instead of GLJS, and the build system is different. I can't remember what I was using before. It's probably Webpack uh, Shutter. Uh, now it's using Vite and Svelte. It was also using Vue before. Now it's using Svelte. But there's not a whole lot of code in it, particularly not a whole lot of code you would need to touch to customize it to your own site. The Arial's list comes from two places. It comes from just a JSON file of surveys, and you could just put in whatever you want here. And this is just our stuff for, you know, whatever years you want or you have. And what it also does is it looks for an ENV key, a key in an ENV file, this Vite v near token, and that's for the near map API. If it finds that in the store where it's making your complete list of aerials, it will make a call with that key to the near map API and get all of these surveys uh, for that, uh, for the bounding box of whatever your area you're interested in. So if you had the near map API and you were using this, you'd, you'd want to change these, this bounding box. Which by the way, near map API, you probably don't need to duplicate the coordinates. They're just, just the top left, bottom right. You don't need all eight. Ah. But anyway, but overall, it's the near map folks know what they're doing. It's 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 really nice API. So that's how that integrates all of that, and it just converts it when it gets it. It converts it to uh, a timestamp, so you can use it in that kind of slider. When it needs to display it somewhere else, it just converts that back to a date. And there's really not a whole lot else to tell you that um, the kind of leaflet or, or the uh, the time machine glass is modified from leaflet magnifying glass. Um, I didn't have to modify it much. There were just a change here or there that I made. I think I added a update layer function so that second uh, time slider can change what the base map layer is in the uh, you know the little seeing glass lens. Some little stuff like that. Overall, it, it's uh, credit to these folks. It, it worked 99% for what I wanted to do. And that's about it. There's not a whole lot super interesting going on here. Again, these, these kinds of sites are not very complicated. I don't know how I managed to botch it. So <laughs> at least the UI so bad the first time, but I did. And now it's a lot better. The performance is way, way better. This is the performance on uh, the old site. And there's just no way to get around this being not great. I mean, you, you could say that um, because it's loading two full screen maps and base maps and GLJS, this is not bad, but it, it, it's still bad. Now it looks like, a, let's see if I can navigate back to, there we go. Now it looks like this. So it's in the greens across the board, I fixed some PWA stuff. Uh, performance is nearly perfect. And this is not, I didn't, um, I didn't chunk out leaflet or anything because leaflet is nice and small. So it, it, if I did that, it'd probably be a hundred, but it's it's not worth it to me. Uh, best practices went down a tiny schmidge just because it really didn't. It's just part of the test. It looks at the images that leaflet is loading and it's like, hey, wouldn't you be, you would be better off if you had different resolution versions of that, which doesn't make sense for what it's doing. So it's neither here nor there. Overall, very good. Um, like. Also, I like this GIF. Uh, I, I send this to people sometimes. Um, no one's hit me yet, but uh, I like this a lot. That's about it. The code is on GitHub. Um, we haven't released it yet. Or we haven't released the main, updated the site yet. We're still doing the contract with near map. So what I might do is just comment out that one ENV file variable, and then it'll just roll with Mecklenburg County's aerials. And then when the near map contract is done, we'll just uh, 
I'll comment that back in and off we'll go. Anyway, feel free to use that code for whatever you want. I hope everybody is healthy and happy and doing well. And we'll catch you later. Bye-bye.